Good morning, everyone. Trust we are doing good. It's quite a lovely weather here in Lagos, Nigeria. And um, what can I say? It showered a lot this morning. And yeah, that's literally it. So, welcome to another webinar that we'll be holding today. And today, we're doing a lot of what we did last week, Thursday. If you can hear me properly, please do drop a message in the chat box. A quick sound check, actually. Drop a message in the chat box if you can hear me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please drop a message in the chat box if you can hear me. Okay, okay, okay. We've got, we've got quite a few number on here. And um, I really, I really like for the number to actually skyrocket up. So... You can do well to share um, the, the the webinar link out to, to friends and families or anybody you like, actually. Some that treats the financial markets. You can do well to send out the link. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning to you. I just called you not quite long. I'm glad you were able to join. Precious, I literally spoke to you right now and you still joined. Um, Dexter, I called your number. It wasn't reachable. Same as Kelechi. Um, troops I called, but <laughs> literally the person said an unknown number, so I was just like, why? Then, Shegun, thanks for joining me. Karachi, thanks for joining me. Good morning, everyone. Wow, it's, 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 it's going to be mind-blowing today, I believe, and we're going to learn a lot, a lot on today's webinar. Um, wow. I'm really, I'm really excited, very, very excited. I'll be teaching a lot also um, about London session, how to trade in London session, how to like maximize the profit potential in London session. It's, it's, it's going to be quite interesting. Um, so, yeah. So the quick one, the first thing we do is I always try to um, let everybody know what we do at Eagle Global Markets. So what we do at Eagle Global Markets is something very very interesting and amazing i'm sure everybody on here is a client of Eagle global markets and let me just run a poll on that actually add a poll and oh okay so the number is skyrocketing actually we've got 12 before we've got like eight um okay so let me just run a poll real quick so like i said i always try to um to, 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 to pitch what we sell to everybody. So uh, the services we offer, everything we offer to know how we're trying to like make the financial space better. So at Eagle Global Markets, what we do is um, we provide or we have products that meet your financial needs when it comes to the financial market, the financial space. So we offer you access to trade the global financial markets. And we offer three products at the moment, which is MT4, Cloud Trade, and a copy trade. So uh, MT4 is a dollar platform where you could actually trade the financial markets in, in a foreign currency, that's dollar for now. And um, our cloud trade, we give you access to trade the financial markets in Naira, okay? And the copy trade platform, we give you access to uh, a platform where there are tons of consistently profitable traders, where you can actually automate the process, copy their trade and make the max of profit potential actually. And that's quite it. That's quite it. And also, we, we've been nominated, like I said, we've been nominated for uh, the fastest growing broker globally and also the best broker Africa and also another uh, segment of that. And I would like for us all to vote for equitable markets right after the webinar okay, or within the webinar to do a walkthrough also on the webinar to see how I can get everybody to vote for equitable markets. Okay. So, is this your first time on our webinar? Okay? Is this your first time joining? Like your first time joining on our webinar? So I will literally send out the poll now, um, yes or no. So just hit the yes or no button on the poll section, okay? Just do that. Let's do that real quick. 11. I'd love to see the numbers on the pool skyrocket today. And I, quite, quite, quite interesting was um, the last webinar we had, that that was like the best response I got on all the polls I've ever run. And I'd love for the same thing to happen again today. Okay. So 
can anybody just give us a quick overview of ask questions morning tricks ask questions on our last webinar if you've got a question you want to ask me on what we discussed in the last webinar um if you've got um um thoughts you want to add to what we discussed on the last webinar things like that please do let me know last webinar what did we talk about anybody at all anybody at all what did we talk about last webinar yeah volatility and liquidity how you could combine the two and utilize it in the financial markets and has anybody got any question on that now if you've not watched the the replay of the previous webinar or you've not um or you didn't attend the last webinar please do want to go to our youtube channel it's there watch it learn from it there's a lot to learn my webinars are literally the best like i share a lot of knowledge and knowledge to 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 approach the financial markets with so has anybody at all anybody at all got any question or want to ask any general question even if it's not related to the topic we're discussing anybody at all i'd love that i'd so much love that and also let's respond to the polls thank you if you've got a question just gladly use the the, the question section okay the question section also my eyes are on the polls okay my eyes are on the polls we just got four people that has responded to it and we are 14 that's really really really, really poor okay so um any questions at all and how's trading been going how's trading been going yesterday i dropped a few a few um trade calls on the telegram group I dropped a few trade call on the telegram group um that was let me quickly check i can't really remember the trades i called why not i called uh ergpy short kjpy um short also and let me check that GPY shorts, KGPY short. So literally, KGPY closed me out at break even, and here GPY hits my term pip stop loss. Okay, but well, well, literally, it 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 is my term pip stop loss. Yes, it did hit. That was my second re-entry. It hit the second re-entry stop loss. So um. Anybody got any question at all? Do you, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm not showing my screen yet. I'm not showing my screen yet, actually. Just the slide alone for now. We'll go to the part where I will show my screen. So, yeah, good morning, Aroma. Hope you're doing good. Um, so, any question at all? I'm trying to, like, let's ask questions so we can gain clarity before going into what we'll be discussing today. Okay. In the absence of no questions at all, um, let's just dive right into what we have today. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the Smart Traders Guide to Trading the London Session. Now, the London Session is, like I said, the the, the financial markets is always open. Um, it's always open. 24 hours a day five days a week okay now how do we treat or how do we properly treat the london session is what i will be discussing today okay and in the in the forex market on the financial space when it comes to forex I, i've i've started okay let's take notes okay let's take notes i've started already let's take notes now in the financial space forex to be precise um you would have heard a lot of things that there are a lot that like, there are eight sessions or seven sessions well i really don't um want to go in deep into that but to me my perspective is there are three major trading sessions and i'm only concerned about the three major trading sessions and they are the asian session the london session and the new york session okay that's what i'm concerned about and those are the three major trading sessions to me so Today we're talking about the London session. The London session, relative to Nigerian time, starts 7 a.m. in the morning, okay? 7 a.m. in the morning. 7 a.m. in the morning. 7 a.m. in the morning, okay? London session starts 7 a.m. in the morning at the moment okay because we are with london and nigeria using the same time now so it's 7 a.m in the morning and it ends by 
5 p.m. and in the noon, okay? 5 p.m. in the noon. So if it is actually plus one GMT, they will add a daylight saving. It's going to be 8 a.m. in sorry, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, if they've added plus one GMT, that's daylight saving, it's going to be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Now, knowing that you could trade one session, well, during the London session, the New York session also opens up and adds to the volatility and the liquidity in the market. Now, how can you measure on price movement or utilize the marks from the financial markets from 7 a.m. to, uh, let's say, um, um, New York session, to New York session open, okay? New York session open, which is, um, at the moment, uh, it opens by um, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. How can you maximize your profit within the time frame of 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. before the New York session opens? Now, it's very simple. You need to understand, firstly, that we call it the London session, okay? The London session. So the active pairs around this period of time will be the GBP, that's the Great British Pounds, and the EUR. Okay, these are the sessions or these are the currency pairs that will be most active at this period of time. So what you want to do is you want to capitalize major on GBP and EUR pairs. Are we following? If we're following, please drop something in the chat box. Are we following? Or well, let me just run a poll on that. Are we following? Are we following? Yes or no? Let's just respond to the polls, okay? Let's use the polls. Let's use the polls. We following. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Now, understand that you need to major around these two currency pairs because this is where volatility, momentum, liquidity, and volume is shifting to during this session because this is the most active session. People around this region are the ones pushing or putting enough money into price projections okay now that you understand the two pairs to actually major on what you want to do is you want to look for trading opportunities on this pairs. now i'll be using um mt4 to mark out price okay i'll be using mt4 to mark out price so let me share my screen so that let's go to the mt4 platform Okay, so let's go to the MT4. I'm trying to share my screen for MT4. Okay, so I believe you can see my MT4 properly. And this is it. I shared a trade this morning. Um, GBP NZD long. It's actually over and around minus 25 pips or something. Um, loss, actually, minus 25 cents loss. And now, okay, let's go right into. Now, like I said, we want to major around GBP pairs, okay, and ER pairs. So I'm adding GBP pairs and ER pairs down to my um, down to my watch list. Now, I won't be trading all. What I just want to find is the perfect or the right trading setup on them that I can capitalize on and make a lot of money from, okay? That's the first thing I want to do. So I will just add all of them down so I don't start looking for them in the, in the list of pairs that we have on the platform. So. so I'm adding them all down. And the last one is GBP. Great. Now, okay, GBP and Z are already in profit. Brilliant. Now, I think there's a question in the chat box. Okay, I should zoom in on it. Okay. Um, I will. I will. 
me just load the template we used. So can we all see my screen better now? Can we see the screen better now? If you can see the screen better now, please let me know. And also let's respond to the polls. Somebody said they're not following the polls. Okay. Um, Okay, now that we understand that we are majoring around GBP pairs and EUR pairs, now what do we do? We want to understand what GBP is doing and what EUR is doing, okay? We just want to look at GBP first, then EUR. Like, we're not looking at the paid currency, okay? We want to look at GBP and EUR, okay? Now, what I do is I use a currency strength meter. I just go to Google and type in currency strength meter and look at which currency has... Uh, the most strength right now is it EUR or GBP? Okay, now I use other factors, but the major one is just currency strength meter. So let me let me disable. Let me stop sharing this screen and start sharing um, blank Google page. No, I've not decided on which to trade, okay? I have not decided. I still have to look at the currency strength meter and consider a few other factors, okay? So, um, currency strength meter, okay? So, currency strength meter, let's just see live charts. Cool. Let's see. Okay, GBP. Okay, so, Euro has more strength than GBP. Okay. At the moment, well, the currency strength meter always changes, it flickers a lot, but all I just see at the moment is the fact that Euro has more strength than GBP. And I consider another factor. I want to understand what is happening on GBP. I want to understand what's happening on EUR. So I just, from the currency strength meter, I've seen what is happening to EUR GBP. Well, this changes always, so I might not want to consider it a lot, okay? It changes every single time, so it's not something you want to make all your trading thoughts on or structure your trading uh, bias on, okay? So after doing that, I just go down to my MT4 back or any charting platform I use, and I want to look out for surprise action, trades to place. So I do my analysis from the daily time frame, okay? From the daily time frame, so where I get GBP and ZB from the daily time frame. I start from the daily time frame and GBP USD. I wouldn't really want to trade GBP USD right now because it's very, very, very choppy. It's very, 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 very choppy for me, like right here, very choppy. Very market structure or structure in price is not really clear, so I might want to stay clear of GBP USD. So, here are GBP. Let's see what it has to offer us. Um, let's see what it has to offer us. Okay, structure on here GBP is quite nice. Okay, it's quite nice. Like looking at the bigger picture, structure on um, here GBP is quite nice. So I think I might want to major on ERGBP, something on ERGBP. So um, let me just delete GBP USD from the list. I'm just taking an overview, look, okay, just an overview, the look on the pair, how the pair looks and what, what I might be doing on it. So ERGBP is one that I might be looking at. Let's go to the daily time frame for ERAUD. Um, ERAD quite choppy. I wouldn't want to force price action on this or force a trade on this though. So I might just decide to mark it out and not place any trade on it. Okay. I just decide to mark it out and not place any trade on it. ERUSD, I'm not really interested in ERUSD because it has the influence of New York session on it also. So I might not really want to hop on ERUSD okay, due to the fact that. I, New York session would have its own play on it also. So I just stick a little bit. So we've got ERCHF left. Just taking an overview look, just an overview 
of what, 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 what I see on the daily time frame. The daily time frame will help me determine what I might be doing on, on this year. So ARCHF looks nice, trending to the upside. I might want to major on this, okay? So I'll keep ERCHF there also. Okay, so templates, checking the daily time frame for ERJPY. Now, ERJPY is in an uptrend, but I really don't like the, the way price is in an uptrend. I want to see something like this. How, how can I draw on this? Okay, um, let me just use this to see something like this. Like a nice movement of price action, not this choppy kind of uptrend, something like this. I want to see something like this, like price creating lows and high the right way. But I would still take a look at it though. I'll still take a look at this to see if I can major on this because if we force it properly, we could still pick out something or figure out something from it. And also it has top bottom. I'm sorry, it has reached the top right here. So it might be something we want to go short on. I don't know. I can't really see it, but until I pick a very, very good. Chat box on. Let's just get over this. Okay, so um, GBP CHF. I really don't trade CHF pairs. I've been saying it quite a while now. I really don't trade CHF pairs, but this looks like a very good option. Low, high, higher low right here, higher high. So we might see something to the downside before we go back to the upside. Well, I might take a look at GBP CHF also. Um, if the price action looks nice, I'll take a trade on it. Um, daily time frame. Um, GBP, JBY, very choppy structure right here. Even though the uptrend is quite nice, but the structure is very, very choppy right here. This looks very parabolic to me. We might see a dump on it, and I'm not really interested in taking a loss from GBP, JBY. So, State of that. Let me just check the chat box if we've got anything. I really don't trade CHF pairs because clearly I really don't trade CHF pairs because um, most times the price action on CHF tends to fake out a lot and you end up getting a loss and we don't really like losses. So I state of CHF pairs actually most of the price action there doesn't really pan out the way the, the sometimes you are you have a lot of precision on some pairs and on some pairs you don't have that that level of precision like i'm comfortable trading during the new york session usd pairs because i know i'll just follow whatever dxy does i'll just do the opposite on um i'll just do the, the same thing on usd base pairs and do the opposite on usd quotes pairs that kind of thing so that's just it um so back to ERNZD. let's see if we've got something nice on ERNZD daily time frame Um, so ERNZD, ERNZD. I, 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 I think I like this piece of price action here. I see something nice right here. It's bottomed. There is something like it. I would still explain as we mark out the charts. Okay. So I think I would stick with ERNZD and daily time frame. Let's, let's see what ER card has to offer us. Um, I like this piece of price action, yeah, but this movement was too, too, too fast. Well, I see we could we could possibly mark something out on 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 ER card daily. Okay? We, could, we, could, we could literally mark something out on ER card daily, and I'll just still add ER card to my list, and let's see what it has to offer us. Um. GBP AED daily. This is very, very choppy in nature. This is very, very choppy in nature. And I would apply a concept I like on GBP AED right here. A very simple concept I like. I would apply it right here and see if we can trade above um, premium. If you can trade it because since price is sitting down at discount right here. Sorry, equilibrium right here. So I'll see if we can trade higher and turn our premium into um, discount. Okay, so 
Um, let's go to GBPCHF and let's see what it has to offer us on the time frame. Wow, you see, this is why most times I say I don't really like trading. Uh, sorry, okay, GBPCHF. The, the price action is nice, but I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not, not willing to, to please trade on this course. This market structure is too, too, too choppy for my nature. Like, price action isn't clear at all. But this looks like a sweet downtrend. I'm not buying it, though. I'm not, not willing to get hurt by GBP. Although, you might see a very sweet setup around this area right here. But not, not me at all. Not me. So, I'll just gently avoid um, GBP card. So, before we start marking out the charts and all, let's go to the, the charts. Yes, very, very choppy, Chooks. Very, very choppy. Has anybody got any question? Do anybody want to ask any question before we start dissecting the charts and understanding the concepts better while we're going long or short on the pairs? Anybody at all? Anybody at all? I'm open to questions. So let's quickly do that. Or you've got questions around um, around the markets that you might want us to apply or some a concept you want us to apply or to explain before applying it, please let me know, okay? Just let me know I'm available to, uh, to to walk you through it and all. So you've got nothing to worry about. And also, let's respond to the polls. Please, if you're following me, just respond to the Are We Following poll. And if this is your first time on my webinar, on the webinar, just respond to it also. Thank you very much. Okay, I've got somebody typing. Okay, I should talk more about gold. I would love to talk more about gold. Um, so let's let's talk about gold before we mark out the chat there. Now, um, when we were talking about um, the relationship between gold, oil, and forex or currency pairs. I explained something to everybody that was on the webinar. I said, um, gold is a safe haven, right? And for one for a dollar bill printed, there's an equivalent amount of gold kept in the reserve for that dollar bill. So if we print one dollar, there's an equivalent amount of gold that represents one dollar that is kept in the gold reserve. Because dollar is backed by gold. Okay. Now if gold goes higher, the value of dollar falls. Okay. If gold is strong, dollar loses value, and if dollar is strong, gold loses value. So that's how I, I what, what, what I do is I now relate. I relate concept of gold, the projection of gold. It actually helps me determine the projection of dollar. So if gold is buying, I'll be looking to be selling dollar, and if gold is selling, I'll look to buy dollar. But most times, I don't really take a look at gold anymore. I just use DXY. That's the dollar index. It's very, very uh, better for me. I feel I feel that's more relative to the dollar, not just doing this based on correlation. So that's why I do generally. So are you a weekly on that? Great, great, great. Are you a weekly on that? Please let me know. If you are clear on that, let me know. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Nowadays, the Federal Reserve prints the out of thin air. I was about to say that now, for now, for now, um, this book I read, and it's just the concept of uh, gold and dollar by Robert Kiyosaki. I think it was a blog post compiled into a short PDF, and they named it something actually. So um, now the Federal Reserve don't keep gold anymore. They just print gold out of thin air because of this not... <laughs> Chicks is literally uh, making me laugh. So um, the Federal Reserve just prints gold and gold, I'm uh, sorry, just prints dollar and dollar is not backed by anything. It's just prints it out of the thin air and see they are keeping. Well, I really don't want to ponder down that on this webinar. I just want to create clarity. So um, there's like quantitative. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, thank you very much and thanks for that, band. So let's dive right into the charts. I think somebody asked a question. You won't understand. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, it's a joke. So let's dive right into the charts. ERGBP from the daily time frame. Now, 
Um, I would so much love to talk about this piece of price action in the blue box, but um, it's it will waste our time. I really don't look at. I just try to understand what happened on the left hand side, which is this area right here. But I'm more considerate on what happens at this area right here. I'm more concerned about what happens in this area right here. So I'm not concerned about what happened here anymore. Fine. I want to understand what previous price action did, but I want to measure my expectations on this piece of previous, of on this piece of price action, the price action in the blue box. Okay. I'm more about this price action in the blue box. Okay. So let's zoom in. Now this is where the work gets interesting. This is where it gets interesting. Um, now we have ERGBP, okay, ERGBP. Now, what do I see on ERGBP? Very simple. We've talked about these concepts before. I'll talk about it again. We have ERGBP trading to the downside. This is a high right here. Okay, that's a high, and this is a low right here. Okay. Then this is a what? A high, but this high was never taller than this high, so we call this a what? A lower high. Then we can see somewhere around this lows right here. Well, those lows are very small. I can consider them, but I, I, I just don't want to consider them. So I can come and say this is a lower low right here. I will consider them on lower time frames, but not on this because it's not really clear. It's not major. Then this is another uh, lower high. And this is another lower low. And this is another lower high. So this is the most significant lower high before price traded higher. What's that telling me? That's just telling me that market structure has broken. Okay, market structure has broken. So that's telling me market structure has broken. So I want to zoom in better to get detail about the market structure that broke. Okay. This is it right here. So I just want to get detail about this. So this is it right here. That's a breaking market structure right there. Okay, it's happening already. That's a breaking market structure right there. Okay. This is a BMS right there. Price traded higher. So there's a breaking market structure right here. And we have um imbalance at this area right here. So I can just mark out that imbalance. Imbalance means price didn't trade efficiently in that area. So I've explained the concept of efficient price action and inefficient price action multiple times, and I'll explain it again. Now, what is efficient price action and inefficient price action? I wish I was using the other platform I used, but I just want to use this one so everybody understands how to go about it. So let's take, for instance, this is a candlestick. And this is another candlestick. Then price just continues to go up. Okay, price never came to fill this gap in the middle. Okay, this is inefficient price action. Every gap you see here, makes price inefficient. Okay, the gap in the middle of price, if it never closes, it's inefficient. But if price now does this, now trades lower. If price does this now trade lower, if price now trades lower to fill this inefficiency either to the brain or just a part of it. We can now say price is efficient. Okay, so there's inefficient price action and this efficient price action. So what we have right here, that blue area I marked there, is inefficient price action. So what am I expecting on um, ERGB? I'm expecting ERGBP to, to sell before buying. So I, I can now go to the four hour time frame. Now on the four hour time frame, I just want to mark out price action to my taste. Now look at this right here. This was price trading higher, right? Price creating series of higher highs and higher lows. Well, this was the most recent what higher low before price broke created this liquidity right here before it broke higher. So I can mark out this higher low and say this is a breaking market structure to the downside, okay? 
So market structure broke and moved to the downside, okay? Like I said, this is a breaking market structure to the downside. Let me just put a few, um, to show you that this is the breaking market structure. So, so this is a breaking market structure to the downside. But what happened? You see price had to trade back up to what? Fuel this what inefficient price action. See the inefficient price action here, see. From this week to this week, did you see it? Price had to go back up and fill that inefficient price action before coming down to fill this one. So every single time price will be filling price action that is not effective, that is inefficient and all. So you see price came down to fill that ineff ineff in in inefficient price action. And now what do we have? We see price came back up. And what did price came back up to do? Price came back up to fill this one right here because of it will reflect on a lower time frame. So let's see a lower time frame like one hour. Like I said, this inefficient price action here, you see? Price came higher to fill it, okay? So now, what am I now looking for? Sorry, for our time frame now. I'm going to the four hour back. What would I be looking for on ERGDP? What I'll be looking for in the RGB is opportunity to sell. Now, this is an order block right here. This bullish candle is an order block right here. So I can mark out this order block as my PY. So order block is just support and resistance. Okay, you've got nothing to worry about. So I like to change this to another color actually. So we can see it better. Um, let's do gray. So yes, so we can see what is inside now. This is an area I'll be looking to sell. And also, if I use my Fibonacci from swing guy to swing low, what is this telling me? This is telling me that price came back into what? Premium, okay? Premium, and that's 50%. If we now measure the, the order block, we can see that it came back to 50, relatively 50% 50 of the order block. So okay, let's measure it properly from low to high. You see, it came back to like 50%, around 50% of the other block. So I literally will be looking for selling opportunities inside this box. But I can't sell inside this box immediately. I need to go down to a lower time frame, like the one hour time frame now. Okay. On the one hour time frame now. Now on the one hour time frame now, what do I want to see? I want to see factors that will allow me to sell. Remember we said this, um, what is it called? This gray box is an other block. That means a resistance. I now want to streamline my resistance. That means I want to make my resistance smaller. So I can now say, okay, this is my resistance here. Or I can decide to go with refining the resistance and say the resistance is now this red candle. Or I prefer to stick with the green candle. Okay, so I wait for price to touch or move into this area before selling. And also let's look at this piece of price action on the one hour time frame. Okay, this is like a low, a high, a low, a high, a low, a high, a low, right here. But price never traded higher. So if we place a, if we want to mark up structure here, we can see this is now a breaking market structure right there. You can see that was a breaking market structure right there. Like this area, market structure broke. So understanding my market structure broke is telling me that what price is bearish. Okay, so understanding that price is bearish, I can now go back to the four hour. I only use the four hour. And
Um, sorry, I'm sorry. I never knew the internet did cut me out. It's just network. I'm very, very sorry. So where did I stop? Because I already talked quite far. Like I, I already spoke a lot. So just tell me where I stopped and I can start from there. Wow. I just had to like check my 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 internet and see I got disconnected already. I'm very, very sorry. I want to share my screen back now. I'm very sorry about the where did I stop actually? Because I already talked a lot. You could see my chat. I already did the mark out a lot. And I'll be looking to sell, like I said. Okay, one hour time frame analysis. Where I said the 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 um the market structure broke, right? Is that where I stopped? Kilichi, please confirm for me. Okay, brilliant. Let's go back there. Now I said on the one hour time frame that if we look at this piece of price action, sorry, if we look at this piece of price action here, yeah, we see that this was a low, this was a high. Then this is a higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, then a higher low, which never traded above this was higher high. So this I'll mark out this area, drag it into price, and what do we have right here? A break in market structure. So now that I understand that market structure is broken, I said this was the area of, POI, point of interest that we were looking to sell before, that I don't want to sell inside this box, that I can streamline it and say, this is where I want to sell now. So if price trades higher into this area, I will just take a shot on, on ERGBP. Then I said, back on the four hour time frame, I'll go back on the four hour time frame. And now on the four hour time frame, my take profit areas, okay, my take profit areas. I said my take profit, my first take profit will be at this low, which is around, if I sell from inside this box, into this area, that's like 500 pips. Oh, sorry, that's like 50 pips, 54 pips. That's my first take profit. My second take profit will be 80 pips, and my third take profit will be 190 pips. So I have to retake profits on the chart. Why did I choose this lose as my take profit area? I said in our last webinar, and we're talking about liquidity, that liquidity is always sitting above old lows and old highs. But that's where we get our entries from. And look at it. This is a old low. This is an old low. This is an old low. That's why I'll be looking for my for my take profit. So that's why I'll look to take profit. And I said this is where I'll be looking to buy ERGBP. If you go back to the daily time frame, this is where the most recent POIs point of uh, point of interest. And see back to the four hour time frame. This is where I'll be looking to buy. ERGBP. As long as it trades lower into this area, I'll be looking for a buying opportunity here. So, do we understand? Let's start from there. Do we understand? Wow. Um, like I said, GBP USD will be affected by New York session. I'm more concerned about the London session in this webinar. Okay, like I said, I'm more concerned about the London session in this webinar. Has anybody got any question? Oh, the block. <laughs> Joe said, Nepa, don't pick lights. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's, it was not Nepa. My, my, my internet connection disconnected me. Okay, order block. The meaning of an order block is just basic support and resistance. Areas you look for buying opportunities and areas you look for selling opportunities. Okay, that's just what it is. Um, and is every, does everybody understand why I will be selling EURGBP? Does everybody understand why I'll be looking for sales on ERGBP? Please, I'd love everybody to confirm. Okay, I'd love everybody. Okay, Precious, from where don't you understand? Let me take it from there again. Where don't you understand? Let me know. Please let me know, okay? If you don't understand, please. Don't 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 be shy. Okay, don't say because everybody's saying yes. You say yes. No, don't be shy. Just come clean, come clean. You entered a sell on this from Tuesday. That was um. Let's count back. Let's let's count back. Okay, let's count back. Um, Tuesday would be today's Wednesday. That was yesterday. You entered a sell on yesterday's candle, right? Oh, sorry, day before yesterday. This was this bull, this bearish, this bearish candle right here. Let's mark out that bearish candle. Let's mark it out and go back there. 
if I enter the cell from Tuesday, if I enter the cell from Tuesday, my stop loss, okay, let's see, that was on the, Tuesday was on the, the third, right? On the third. So on the third, let's just, wow, okay, what's wrong? Okay, on the third, let's just assume you entered your cell at this candle, okay? I would have gone to the one hour time frame and streamlined my stop loss to make it very, very tight. So my stop loss could have been at this high right here. So let's say you entered at this bearish candle. My stop loss could have been how many pips? Let's see. Let's say you entered at the week. Let's just assume you had that position. My stop loss would have been like 10 pips. 10 pips above this high. That's 10 pips. If I keep it above the high, that's 10 pips. Yes. My stop loss would have been 10 pips, like small 10 pips. And I would have made around, um, if I entered on Tuesday, like you said, I would have made around... Um, We get to this point in price. Let's just do 41 pips profit. Well, if you were here, they made around 78 pips. And that's like one to um, that's a one to seven R. Yeah, one to seven R. That's a one to seven rates to reward ratio. You could have made a lot of money from that. So please, those that said they didn't understand, I'm waiting. Okay, so I don't understand because you joined late, okay. Where you explain break and market structure, can you show more light on this forex market? If I, wow. Um, if I, you're new to this, right? Please let me know. If you're new to this and you have an account manager, gladly reach out to your account manager. They will send you um, content you need to watch and get uh, 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 acquainted to, to speed you up to track, okay? Okay, you just need to go to our YouTube channel. Let me get the YouTube channel link for you. Wow. Get to that question, give me goosebumps. I'll be, I'll be candid. Okay. Because I expected everybody on this call to actually knew why we were on this call. So I'll just send you a YouTube link right now to speed you up to track. Okay, so let me just get the link for you. Um, playlist introduction to the forex markets. So yeah, here you go. Um, if I here you go. So this would actually speed you up the track. This is just a basic introduction, like compiled webinars. My webinars compiled into one and named basic introduction to the forex market. Okay, you can watch that and get up to track. Then you can now go to our YouTube channel from there and start learning. Okay, it's not difficult. It's very very simple. You've got nothing to worry about. Um, so back to this. 10 pips. So you're saying 10 pips stop loss is too too low. Okay, how many pips would you have used the tricks? <laughs> 10 pips is very, very small stop loss. It's very, very small. Yes, it's very, it's very important you don't lose all your capital at once. Small, small amounts. I, I don't give up my personal number. It's against company policy. Thank you. Um, well, that's just me, though. I would have kept a 10 pips stop loss. I'm, I'm, more, I'm more precise with my entry. That's why my stop loss are always tight. There was a time I was using 5 to 2 pips stop loss, and price just trades away from it. Like, I prefer precision and losing little than losing much and be precise on the Like, it's just like the market will uh, play with your emotions, okay? So, Precious said she doesn't understand from the point of breaking market structure. Okay, Precious. What a breaking market structure it means, price changed direction. Okay, if price was going, let me let me show you an example on this chart that we're using. So look at this right here. Price was in a downtrend. Okay, we were looking at this from the daily time frame. That was why this was marked again. But if I have to look at this from the four hour, this is a downtrend right here. If I want to mark out the breaking market structure of this downtrend, I will say it is this high. So when market broke this previous high, price changed or direction changed to an uptrend. Okay, now look at this. This was a small uptrend here. Yeah. Highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows. Market broke this low right here. Direction changed bearish. Okay, so that was the concept, or that's the concept of breaking market structure. Now, when breaking market structure changes, we always try as much as possible to look for a trade in the new direction of price. Okay, we always try as much as possible to look for a trade in the new direction of price. I hope you understand. 
So that was the concept behind break the market structure. And this is an order block, a resistance level right here, where we are looking to sell price from. Precious, do you understand? Can you see my screen? Precious, do you understand? You are, that's why you always have to use a stop loss, Karachi. You always have to use a stop loss. No, no, you don't have to use a stop loss for as many times. Just set your stop loss to an indecision area. Oh, okay. An indecision area means that area is where if price gets to, it has invalidated your analysis. Okay. So now, if I'm to enter this ERGBP now, I, and I don't want to wait for it to get into this box before I enter, if I'm to enter this ERGBP now, I'll put my stop loss. Yeah, this is where I put my stop loss. If I enter now, my stop loss will be yeah, above this box. Yeah, like this. My stop loss will be above this box. Why is my stop loss above the box? My stop loss is above the box so as to let myself know that if price trades above that box, it has made my analysis invalid. Okay, that's why we call it invalidation or indecision level. Okay invalidation level this is it right here so the, that, that stop loss will be very small well it will be very very small for me and that's what i like small stop losses that's 30 pips just 30 pips stop loss you see very easy now another thing is if price trades lower if price closes bearish then i'll wait for another candle to to to, to form if that second candle closes bearish and the previous candle i can take my sell there then i'll ignore that area and put my stop loss still at that area which is 30 pips so that's just the logic I use. Very simple and easy. Sorry, I'm sorry. I minimized the, the page actually. I don't use bigger time frame for my stop losses. Unless I want to swing the trade for a long period of time. There was one time USD card. I caught USD card sell from a significant area of structure. And I used like a hundred pips stop loss. That was like the biggest stop loss I used ever. A hundred pips stop loss. And my take profit was like 600 pips. So it still panned out to a one to six weeks to world vision, making 6% of my trading account in like, um, um, how many, how many months? It took like two months for that, for that trading, um, set up to play out fully. I don't use bigger time frames though, unless I'm looking to swing the trade for two months or more. A month or two. That's just it. So are we clear on how we got the sell on ERL GBP? Are we clear on how we got the sell on ERL GBP? I'm asking for the very last time before we go to another currency pair to analyze. Okay, good. So let me just take this screenshot of this and put it on the Telegram channel so we have something to, to revert back to, okay? I just took the screenshot and I'll put it on the Telegram channel right now. I'm trying to, to, to. To add it to the Telegram channel. Okay, a minute. So let me just get the Telegram. Uh, let me see if I can get the link to, to share. Okay, so if you're not in the Telegram channel, you can join the channel using this link. Okay, and join the channel using this link. Yeah, I prefer making my analysis on daily and H4 than H1. H1 is just for precise entries. That's the link to the Telegram channel. So from that link, you can join the Telegram group also. There's just a join group below. You can join group also. So I'll just wait for possibly as we're on the webinar, price can trade into this gray area and I take a shell from there. So let's move to another currency pair. Now, um, EURAUD, let's see. I'm sorry I zoomed out just for more clarity actually.
Okay, a minute. Um, okay, great. Now, ERAUD, we can see we are generally in a downtrend, but what caught my interest initially on ERAUD was this, okay? Was this piece of small price action here. It is ranging, fine, but it is ranging with compression. Now, what is compression? Compression is when price moves this way. I think I added a tool to this. Let me just see object list. So compression is when price moves this way. Compression is when price moves this way. So there's always compression in supply and demand, in um, ICT, in BTMM. These are trading approaches I'm mentioning. There's always compression in those. If you are using that type of trading approach, if you see a compression, you know it. Well, I know most of these trading approaches. That's why I see that this is a compression. So price just tends to trade in this way till a breakout of course, okay? Price tends to move in this way till a breakout of course. That's just what the compression is. That's just what the compression. Now, why do I like this piece of compression here? I like the piece of price action compressing. Um, I really don't know much about Wyckoff. I would have agreed to you that it was a Wyckoff schematic. But what it looks like to me is, um, let me show you what it looks like to me. Okay, let me show you what it looks like to me. This is the 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 range right here. So let's look at this properly. This is the range right here. This was the accumulation. This was the manipulation, so we are expecting a distribution, but the distribution is not as much as the uh, uh, manipulation, okay? Accum AMD, accumulation, manipulation, then distribution. So the, I don't know why the distribution is taking time though, but let's just see what price has to offer. That's for those that understand why cost. Now, what I want to go at is, remember I told you I saw something very, very nice on ERAUD. Now let's, let me show you what I, I saw on ERAUD, swing blue, to swing high. Let me change my, my, my Fibonacci settings, okay? Let me change my Fibonacci settings so everybody can see it properly. Um, okay. Levels. Yeah. Uh, make that visualization. Let's see. Trying to make my fibs uh, in a way that everybody can see it. Okay, so look at this right here. Let me just hide this this one right there. I think there's a way I can hide it. Okay, now look at this right here. You see, what has price been doing? Price has been trading around this 50 level for a while. So this is that like price is in an equilibrium. And when we talk about equilibrium, there's a tendency for price to break out in one direction. I don't know the direction price can break out in. But I know price has been trading in equilibrium for quite a while. So what will I do? What I'll do is I'll just sit back and wait. Okay, I, I think I can't get the, the fibs off my, my PC anymore. Trying to like delete the feed. Okay, sorry. Let's go back. So the charts. So I said price is literally trading in equilibrium, okay? So the fact that I understand that price has been trading in an equilibrium gives me an edge to know what price might do. So what am I going to wait for? I'm just going to mark out in this area right here, that high. I'm going to mark out that high right there. I'm going to mark out this low right here. If you remember what we did on USDJPY some days back, that's what I'm literally waiting for. Once price trades a move, see, even if price does this, weaks it, and now closes below, that is a break of market, a break in market structure for me. I'll just be looking for opportunities to go long. And vice versa, if it happens to the downside also. So now let's go to the four hour time frame. Let's see if we can see a trade within this range. Well, I won't place a trade if it's still in a range. I'm just actually joking on that. But 
this is a range right here and i'm not willing to risk my my capital to trade within this range so i'll just avoid ERA AUD for now till i see a very good piece of price action play out on it okay i'll just avoid ERA AUD for now till i see a very good piece of price action play out on it that's just what i'll do on ERA AUD. Yeah, I already done that. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm still watching ERGVP for now. You can use this principle on any time frame, any time frame of your choice. So I'm going to leave ERAUD for now. Now, ER, you see what happened to ERGVP? GBP is quite weak. Okay, GBP is quite weak. I said ER was strong. Remember, we checked the 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 what's it called? The the um the currency strength meter, we said ER was strong, GBP was weak. But this, I still won't want to sell until I see a reaction. So what I expected ERGBP to close lower, okay? So if ERGBP closes as this candle, I'll wait for it to close lower. So I must see a bearish candle first before I go in into the street. So I'm still watching ERGBP from all angles. Let's see what it has to offer. If it goes higher, my trade, if it goes to that red line, my, my trade has been in this in in this in, in, in the size of the day. So I can't really place a trade on this anymore. If it goes into this red line. You see, I could have gotten a sniper entry right there. Right there. Let's go down to the 15 minutes time frame to see if there's something I can quickly do to get my entry in into ER GBP. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So I can decide to go short here, because what? This is actually a, a, a clean high that has been taken out right here. So let's see ARGBP short. Okay, so let's see what price has to offer. So we are in profit immediately. Let's see. Let me set my stop loss. I'm not willing to risk much. Let's set my stop loss. I'll just be risking. 10 pips in general, okay, 10 pips in general. Stop loss set, take profits, one set, okay? So let's see what price has to offer. Let's see if it goes to our take profit immediately or not, okay? So we're bearish fully, that's the sound of, that's the joy when you place a trade. So I've gone short on ERGBP. Could have gone short here, but I had to wait for confirmation. Like I said, it has to close lower for me. So. It has not closed yet, but I like the fact that it rejected fully. And if this closes as a bearish candle, that's like confirmation for me. So I love the, the I love that 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 um, that that piece of price. Okay, yeah, I got into the cell. My my internet acted up again, but I got into the cell. I I literally was talking about the cell before the internet act.
Okay, so I was saying I I hope I go on the 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 cell also. I'm very very sorry about the, the the continuous disconnection. Like I really don't know what's wrong with the internet today at the office. But I just hopped on my own personal internet. Now I said I could have gotten my cell yeah on this candle right here because this was his source. But I never wanted to come down to the um to the fifteen minutes time frame so as not to confuse everyone. But I'm glad we are actually all in in, in profits. And I told you. What happened to GBP and ZD? He tried to hunt my stop, but it never did. Why well, there was an order block right there, and my my order block, I didn't pick it from the uh, the 15 minutes time frame. I picked it from the four hour. So it was this. Sorry, from the daily. I think it's from the daily. Yeah, I think it's from the from the daily right here. Yeah, this is it. This order block right here. So I expect the price to like trade away from it, and that's what we have today. Like free money on the webinar today. So. ERGBP sell. Let's see if it literally moves very close to my stop to my take profits. I would switch my take profits to um, to take profit two since it's moving really really close. I move to uh, take profit two. That's a total of like eighty two dollars. Let's see if it breaks this low. It's attacking this one. If it breaks this low, it will come and attack this one before we look for buying opportunities right there. So you see. Trading the financial market is very, very easy. Very, very easy. Yes, network is very bad. I think it's because of the rain. Trading the financial market and making cool money off the financial markets is very, very easy. So let's go to the other pairs. We've gotten our entry for ERGBP. Let's go to the other pairs. Now, ERCHF daily. Okay, what do I see on ERCHF daily? ERCHF daily is quite interesting. We're in an uptrend. I agree. But we need to come down. We need to go down. We could have gotten our entry on the four hour with that. I don't know what cost that piece of price action. But after the webinar, I would do my research to see what cost that piece of price action. But we could have gotten our entry on the four hour because it retraced back up into this other block. We could have gotten our entry there, but we missed out. It's all good. Let's break down ERCHF. Okay, ERCHF. Let's break down ERCHF together. Now, why would I want to sell ERCHF before buying ERCHF? Very simple. There is indecision, imbalance. Sorry, there is imbalance and ineffective price action all through this area. Although it's very small, you won't notice. But if you go to the weekly time frame, you would notice better. Okay, you would notice better. See, right? It's very big on the weekly time frame. So let's start our analysis on ERCHF from the weekly time frame. Okay, let's start our ERCHF analysis from the weekly time frame. I said ERGBP was a sell from the beginning of the analysis. From the beginning of the analysis, I said it was a sell before we buy. Okay, so we sold before we are looking to buy. So the, the sell is still on, but we've not actually um, gotten the, 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 the buy. I said the buy is at this area. So let's come to my take profit too. Before I now start looking for price action that aligns with the buy bias, okay? So that was what we discussed. I'll, I'll try as much as possible to, 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 to push that to my bosses if they could get that internet connection and all. So let's go to ERCHF. I said we'll start with ERCHF from the weekly time frame. So ERCHF, we moved upward, but we need to come down. So what we have here is an order block on the weekly time frame. This is a bullish PD array. This is a bullish PD array, so it's an order block right there. Then we had indecision in price action or ineffective price action right here. Okay, so let me just change this bullish PD array, that's the bullish order block, to a blue color. Okay, so let's just make it blue like a, a demand zone. Okay, so. There's no light blue. Let's just use aqua. Wait, let's use aqua for it. Now, let's go to the daily time frame to now see this thing add up. We want to see it add up. We want to see it add up. Now, this is the this is the fair value gap, the indecision in price. And what do we have? We can see that price has started trading into it. Okay. 
I'm only interested in buying what's it called ERCHF. And I can streamline my buy order to this area. I can streamline the area I want to buy. But I can still sell also. But I can streamline the area I want to buy to this block right here. This area right here. So this is where I'll be looking for buying opportunities from. This block right there. Now, let's see why I want to sell. If I want to sell ERCHF. Now, if I want to sell ERCHF, look at it from this area right here. A low, a high. A higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high. Then higher low right here. But we never broke this higher high. So if we did the same thing we said we want to do for that range on ER AUD or ER card, I guess. If we do it right here for it, we see that what market structure what broke. Okay. Market structure broke. So right there, we had a break in market structure. We had a break in market structure right there. So Knowing that there's a breaking market structure right there, I'll be looking for selling opportunities, okay? Selling opportunities. Are we all following? If we are following, okay, I said a PD array, premium discount array. It's like areas look for buying and selling opportunities. That's what it's called. I posted it in the chat box. Are we all following? Do we have any question? Are we all following? Do we have any question? Please let me know, okay? Are we all following? Do we have any questions? Please let me know. Sorry, are we all following? Do we have any question? Any question? Are we all following? Do we have any question? Let me know before I proceed. Do we have any question? Let me know. Please do let me know. Do let me know, okay? Are we all following. Are we all following any questions at all? Okay, great. Now, we said ERCHF. We are looking for opportunities to sell before we now buy, right? And we said that is the weekly fair value gap, okay, in this inefficient price action. So let's just keep in mind that it's inefficient price action here. Yeah, I don't want to cluster my charts, okay? So let's just keep in mind that it's inefficient price action. Yeah, and we had a break in market structure here. Yeah. Also, we had a break in market structure here, okay? Trying to make this very, very okay. Great. Now that we know that we had a break in market structure here, break in market structure here, we can major on this relevant or this recent break in market structure. Now we are going to the four hour time frame for, for juice on the chart, okay? Juice. Wow, I have to make my chart very, very small to be able to do this. I just hope you, you just, just follow along, follow along. The chart is very small. I know you might not see the whole price action, but this is the best way I can get the whole price action on the chart. Okay, now we had a breaking market structure here. We agree, right? Now that we agree that we had a breaking market structure here, let's zoom in and see what price, what, what price did. So, what price did was price traded back higher into this what this order block right here for a sell opportunity. You can now see it. So what price did again here was to trade higher, but it never got there. What are we looking for? We are looking for opportunities to sell. Now I could have sold blindly here, yeah, but I need to wait for price action. I need to wait for price action. There's no opportunity to sell, but we know we must sell. And I can't just sell, so I need to wait for price action. I can now go down to the one hour time frame. On the one hour time frame, there is still no reason for me to sell because there is no sponsorship. Sponsorship means area of time, uh, inefficient price action, something like that. That's what sponsorship means. There is no sponsorship for me to sell, except for the one right here. But if we look at it closely, was there a reason for price to trade higher? Yes, there are two reasons for price to trade higher. Why? 
place what liquidity right here at this high right here and there is liquidity right here so we need it to trade higher into one of these areas and also if we look closely there is inefficient price action right here okay so now we are with the hopes that what erchf will trade higher back into this source right here okay so now the only thing we'll be doing is we'll just need to wait i told you waiting is very very crucial in the financial markets you need to wait for your analysis to to tell you to do this or do that if we didn't wait and we just sold um eur gbp we just sold let's say we just sold somewhere around here when price was there we would have been in deep drawdown would be scared and it would have made our stop loss still 20 pips but look at it our stop loss is just 10 pips now 10 pips from 20 pips it went lower to 10 pips and see our entry was very very precise and now we are waiting to catch 80 80 dollars so you see how easy it is now back to you as you we want to wait for price to do this before coming down now why do i think price will do this before coming down let me show you remember i said i use volume so let's see volume is it volume 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 wow let's check here volumes found it now let's just use the volumes right here why do i think um eur chf might go higher look at this volume was reduced in this area right here i'll prove it to you volume was reduced in this area right here okay this area right here see volume was reduced but what happened volume was much in price now look at volume was increased right here but volume was less in price what's that telling us that's telling us that there's going to soon be a change in price action okay that's a, a, a calculated move there's going to be a change in price action soon okay so what do we need to do we just need to what we just need to wait We just need to wait for this to pan out. Now look at this. This is very, very, or literally almost equal, but not really equal. This was lower, this was higher. This was lower, this was higher. So we might see price change direction to the upside first to grab liquidity here, grab liquidity here, trade into this area before we see a sell. So we just have to keep watching ER, uh, ER uh, JPY. Now, ER, sorry, ERCHF. Now, ERJPY, we've been spending how many hours on this webinar? Okay, wow, one hour, 21 minutes, crazy. Okay, now let's see. ERCHF, please explain the difference between imbalance and order block. I said, Joe, please listen carefully. I said, imbalance is when price doesn't trade effectively. Okay, that's when there's a gap okay that's imbalance order block is support and resistance an area of support and resistance that's just it now to erjpy price is an uptrend agree lower highs and lower lows lower highs and lower lows price is an uptrend we all agree that price is an uptrend but the uptrend is not really an uptrend that um that is very how would i put it that is very interesting to hop into. Fine, there's liquidity here, but we need to consider that is external liquidity and external liquidity here. So I think I would need to go to the weekly time frame to see something better. On the liquid time frame, we have hit a source right here. Or an order block. Let's just say it's an order block. Yes, it's an order block. We've hit an order block right there. So this might be a sign that we should sell because look at this area right here, weeks everywhere. Let's add our volume and see. See what happened right here now. Tell me, do you still want to buy this? See, volume was increased, but volume was never increased. When volume was reduced, volume was increased in price. That's just telling us that it's what? 
a captured move or a fake move that wants people to just buy, continue buying, then price drops on the head. See right here. Do you see? So this doesn't align together. This doesn't align together at all, which would be very, very risky for me to buy um, ERGPY. So first thing first, I understand ERGPY is in a, is in a weekly order block. Okay? I decided it's in a weekly order block. So on the daily time frame, I really need to see it either break this low or break this high. One of the two. Same thing we are waiting for on ER card, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I can now go to the four hour time frame. If I now want to like force a trade on this, I'll go and look for breaking market structure on four hour time frame. And what do we have right here? Breaking market structure. So let's delete that weekly order block. We just have to keep in mind that there's a weekly order block. Delete. And there's, an, there's a daily area. Check them on the four hour time frame. What happened? This is a, a let's look at this trend. This trend low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher low, higher high. What happened? We broke this piece of price action right here. Okay, we broke this piece of price action right here. That's a break in market structure. Then what happened? Price traded higher. Why? To fake people out, to buy more. Then what happened? It just came coming down. Like, just kept coming down. And see, there's no indecision right here. See, if we look at this properly, look at this close right here, this close of this bearish candle. You see, it is relatively the same as the highest point in that bullish candle here. Okay? It's relatively the same as the highest point in this bullish candle here. Or oh, it's very much the same. It's very much the same. Let's zoom in and see. Let's zoom in and see. Let's see. This is it. So, how do I check this? There's a way I can check it, actually. There's a way I can check it. There's a way I can check it. Um, well, there's a way I can actually check it. Okay, let's just do this. Let's just use price. Um, let me add the two to my... To my Trying to add the two, customize, only price, price label or something, or price label, I think. Okay, yes, price label. This is it right here. So let's see what this price label is. 131.658. Let's see what this price label is. 131.661. There is no difference. If you look at it closely, there is relatively no difference because it's almost the same piece of price. Now, now that we understand that, where's my take profit? I'm going to sell this. So where's my take profit? This is where my take profit will be. My first take profit will be here. Old low. Then my second take profit will be here. Now that I understand that, what did price or why did price trade higher? This is why price traded higher into that bearish order block there. And price is still there, so I can take a short right now, but I can't just rush and take a short. I need to go to the one hour time frame and see what happened in price. What happened in price? Why did price have to trade higher? Yeah, price had to trade higher because there was liquidity year and year, so we had to trade into this. Now, let's streamline the order block right there. Good, I've gotten a weak entry, like a very, very wicked entry, very, very precise. So I can now take gladly take a short on ERGPY, then set my stop loss at this high 20. Let's just say 22 pips, okay? 22 pips, and my first take profit at this low. 44 pips, that's a one to two risk to reward ratio. Okay, I'm very okay with that. Now that is the reason why I am selling ERGPY. Like very simple. You broke structure here, yeah? it's trading lower, it's went higher into this order block, and I want it to come down. That's just the major reason why I am selling ERGPY. So let's see what we have in the chat box. So um, troops, I'm not buying ERGPY, I'm going short on ERGPY. I just use the 20 pip stop loss. I've got nothing to lose. 
So that's just it. I've got nothing to lose. So we, we are just waiting for ERC just to trade higher, actually. To trade higher so we can sell. Trying to just make this very, very perfect. Okay, so we are going short on ERJPY. 25 stop loss, very, very small. So not really bothered about that. Any question at all? Oh, let me zoom in, okay, let me zoom in. Can you now see the reason why I'm going short on uh, ARGPY? Can you see the reason why I'm going short on ARGPY? Yes or no? Just let me know. Do you agree to it or you don't? <laughs> okay, so let me just run a quick poll. Okay. Um, okay, I want to put up a quick poll actually. I just sent out a new poll. Please let's respond to it. Thank you. Let's just see if you are GPY shorts or not and all. So do we all understand why I'm going short on ERGPY? I'd love to get a response in the chat box. Do we all understand why I'm going short on ERGPY? Okay, so GBPCHF. I told you I was going to look at GBPCHF. Why? And I'll show you why now. Let's go into GBPCHF. Now, this is actually a sweet uptrend for me. And I like the way price form, but I want to sell price before buying price again. Now let's use basic retail trading method or basic trading method. Basic trading method, we just say this is um, this is resistance that got broken. Okay, resistance that got broken, and we are expecting it to act as support. Okay, so we say we want to buy price here, but there's a tendency price might never get there. And basic trading method to say this is uh, resistance also. That's why price rejected from there. I agree to that. But to me, this is an area of um, an order block right here where price reacted to and reason for it's coming down. So now let's just now look at GBPCHF. I want to look for selling opportunities before buying opportunities on, on GBPCHF. So what I want to do is simple. I want to Look for buying opportunities right here. Or I can go down to the weekly time frame for more precision on which area to look for buying opportunities on. So on the weekly time frame, I might not be looking for, or on the daily time frame, I might not be looking for buys. Then I come and start looking for buys around this area right here. Okay, so on the daily time frame, I can go back to the daily time frame and look at where that area is actually. So right here, somewhere around here. Okay, so I might see GBPCHF sell into that area. Well, I'm not sure. I could be wrong also. But let's look at it. This is where the uptrend began. Okay, so high, low, higher, high, lower, 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 low. Sorry. Higher high, higher low. Sorry, it's a higher low actually. Sorry. Then the higher high, then what happened? We broke market structure here. So we broke market structure here and we retraced higher. Okay. We retraced higher. Why did we retrace higher? We retraced higher to feel this half of this inefficiency, and also to come back to this block. This is a reclaimed block right here. So we came back to that reclaimed block, and we went short, okay? That was why. Now, I want to see price trade below this area. So if I'm to take profit selling, this will be my first take profit.
this will be my second take profit right here. But I can't just say I want to sell because of there was a break in market structure. I need to see more confluences. Okay, I need to see more confluences. So I'm going to the forward time frame now. Forward time frame, I want to dig in deep into price. Why would I want to go short here? Yeah. There's no reason for me to go short here. Yeah. There's no reason, because why? I'll be candid, this was a stop hunt. This was a stop hunt right here. So a stop hunt happened, price traded higher. And if we look at this, this was the last high market structure broke to the upside. So this sell was just a reaction to come back into this order block right there. And we rejected. So what I'll be doing is I'll be looking for selling opportunities. Sorry, I'll be looking for buying opportunities to the upside before selling opportunities. Well, I can't still enter this buy. Why? It's too risky for me. I have to see trade above this area right here. So if I want to sell, I'll be looking for my selling opportunities at this area. Looking for selling opportunities right there. So all I need to do for GBPCHF is to wait. Fine, it will sell, but I still need to wait. Why? Liquidity, liquidity. This is where we need to hop into before coming down. Even though these imbalance is right here, I'll still need to see if price breaks this and trade higher, then I will look for selling opportunities right there. So GBPCHF also, I'm waiting. Cloud Trade doesn't allow you to set close stop loss. Please, Cloud Trade allows that. I've seen Cloud Trade allow that multiple times. I use the Cloud Trade platform a lot, so I don't know why you're not able to set a, 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 a pipe stop loss. I set a pipe stop loss also on Cloud Trade, so I think that, that that's literally, you're, you're, you're possibly, it's within price. My screen is showing. My screen is showing. It's right here. The GBPCH have also, I'm waiting, but I can just delete that off my, I, I hope somebody's taking note of all this piece of price action that we say we are waiting on. So I'm still holding GBP ERGPY. Now, ERGPP is closing indecisive. Let's see what, what price is doing. Now, let's see, price actually trying to hold this level. It has closed below this level, or weak below this level, which means structural break. So we should see more bearish, side to more, more, more trades to the downside or more price action to the downside actually the 15 minutes time frame let's see it's just going back up to feel that imbalance then we see more sell because this is a block right here you can reclaim that block and go down further gbpnz is still standing twice as tall let's see what starts to offer so eurnzd wow we might have missed our entry on ernzd also once i miss my entries i don't like forcing in an entry now the same concept I explained on ERGPY last week. This is the highest point or the lowest point, the highest low that we had in, in, in price action when it was in this downtrend. So this is the lowest point. And what do we have? We saw price broke. We saw price broke above. So this is just telling me that market structure broke. Now, I would have considered this as the first or the highest market structure, but look at this right here. There is actually a piece of price action here. So I can now consider this as my breaking market structure. Well, they are both breaking market structure, but I can consider this. And look at where price bought from. Price came into this bullish PD array right there. We could have gotten our entry very early this morning. But like I said, I was going to look for buys on um ERGP, ERNZD, sorry. So it's not it's not it just really moved away from the OB. So uh I might be looking for I might trade that aggressively and enter then streamline my stop loss. So let's streamline the OB first to this. With that I can now streamline my stop loss. Sometimes I could have got my entry right there. Use like a how many people stop loss would I have used? Let's see. If my entry was there, I could have used the 
three pips stop loss. Three pips stop loss right there. Or four pips. Let's even make it five. Five will be right here. Right here. Five will be right here. Five pips stop loss. But now that we are on the four hour time frame, let's see why we should go long. Okay. Now, why should we go long? Is because of number one. Liquidity is right here. So I wasn't going to use that actually. Liquidity is right here. And there's clean highs right here. Like you would call this a double top, but that's just clean highs. Anticipating to grab what liquidity. So I could go into this aggressively and go long. So let's just say uh, buy. Now, why would I be buying? I'm buying because of why price has cleared every single low right here. Every single low. See, this is liquidity at every of this single low right here. So price cleared that liquidity, stop pushed, then we traded immediately away from it. So my stop loss would be wow, my stop loss would be white. Wow. My stop loss is like uh 100 pip. No, not at all. I, I can't settle for that. So let me just set my take profit at this high right here first, then go down to a lower time frame and look for a better stop loss. So I go down to the one hour time frame. I bought ERNZD. So yes, found a better place to put my stop loss. My stop loss could be right here. Wow. 74 pips and I'm settling for many pips. That's too much for me. Too, too, too much. Yeah, right here. That's 277 pips. That's like a, close to a, one to three weeks to reward ratio. I'm not settling for that. So I can still go down to the 15 minutes time frame, trying to get the best stop loss. So your stop loss plays a major role in your trades. Like trades you place. Made a mistake. And just did a stop loss without looking. So, okay, I can now set my stop loss below this right here. Yes, I'm comfortable. A 34 pip stop. I'm comfortable with that. Why am I comfortable? Look at this right here. This is an order block on price reacted into it. So you should have no problems right there. So now this is what I call a very, very precise entry. 227 pip stop loss. Sorry, take profit with a 34 pip stop loss. That's like a sweet trick to reward which I think one to nine or something. Are we all following? Volume, you check on that studies, okay? You check on that studies, you get your volume on the Cloud Trade platform, okay? So, ERNZD, we went long on ERNZ. Now, ERCAD, okay, why would I be going short on ERCAD? Let's see. It's indecision right here, all of this area right here. Sorry, imbalance in price, ineffective price action inefficient price action sorry right there and we need price to fill it up we need price to fill it up so we believe for our buying opportunities here let's just delete and we already have a, a, a diagram of where the imbalance is or the, the the inefficient price action is so let's zoom out this is where we'll be looking for buying opportunities so we can still sell ER card into this area before buying. So I can now go to the four hour time frame. And wow, wow, wow. Price action is not really for me right here because this is clean low. Let's see if, if it's really a clean low or just a stop purge. Okay, so it was a stop purge. And price has a tendency of trading higher, higher back into here, into one of these areas right here, like into one of these areas into one of this this is one area i'm looking at to to sell so why do i think so let's add volume let's see if volume gives us a reason to buy okay so look at volume right here volume was increased around this area whereas volume was not increased just decreased a bit then where volume was increased here yeah, Volume was never increased there, like majorly never increased there. So what we have was just this generally. This piece of price action here. 
vas a obviar. Sorry. Right here. So this should actually pan out. Why? Because this is an auto block right here. See, very, very small. So no surprise, even if we drag this forward and see this is where we want to major on, it's still relatively the same. So I can actually look for buying opportunities on ER card there. Now, why am I looking for buying opportunities on ER card? Um, all, all actually fell. Let me confirm if all really fell. I have a mark out on another platform. Um, just trading view, actually, it's not really another platform. Wow, trying to get my US oil mark out, out and I can't find it. Oh, oil just sold off not quite long. Yesterday it sold off after reacting to um, daily POI, uh, POI, yes, daily point of interest. I still see it coming low a bit today, so I can look to buy what it called. I can look to buy an uh, ER card, but I'll look to buy ER card with like a smaller lot size because the, the, the analysis doesn't really add up, so I can use zero and zero to buy. Then use a how many pips stop loss? Use a wow, 53 pips stop loss and a. A 295 pip tick profit. So let's see what happens to price. Let's see if price plays out to the upside or not. Now to the last one, which is GBP AUD. I said I saw something interesting also on GBP AUD. Very, very interesting on GBP AUD. The same thing we saw particularly on ERCHF or so. This was the highest point. This was the lowest point. Okay. Now, if we major on this piece of price action right here, see. This is a high, and this is a low, okay? This is a lower high above here. And this is a lower low right here. Then this is a lower high and a low. Now, what I want to get at is, this was the most significant high before the whole thing moved to the upside. So I can mark this out as a break in market structure. Okay, I'm trying to make it very, very perfect. Um, okay, that's a break in market structure. And see what happened to price. Price traded higher. But now we broke this piece of structure right here. And now we are trading lower. Now, why are we trading lower? We want to come back to this area. Now, you might be wondering, we already came back to this area here. We already came back to this area. Here. But we want to come back to this area, like to 50% of this area, the middle of it. Why? Because of this is liquidity, this is liquidity. It's no longer a test of the other block. It's acting as liquidity now. So what do we do? We go to the four-hour time frame. And we try to see if all of it adds up, OK? Remember, everything we do in the financial markets, all based on probabilities, we, we wait for the markets to either um, reward us or humble us, OK? So now we broke structure. We went up, we went down went up again we're in a range currently we are currently in a range we are currently in a range from this high to this low okay let's use the feed in that instance let's see we are currently in a range so what would i do in this instance i'll just wait i won't try to force price action actually I'm trying to force price action actually. I'll just wait for price to 
to do its thing. Tries to give me a reason to um, actually either go short or long. But I will be looking to go short further into this area rather than going long. So that's just my thoughts on GBPA UD, and we can just remove GBPA UD from the list. So ER card, ERNZD, ERGBY, ERGBP. Like I said, it came back to fuel this. This order block reacted, and we are going down already. GBP and ZD I shared it in the morning also. So let's send in EUR AUD markouts to the group. So let's use the four hour time frame actually. So generally we said EUR AUD, we are going to go short. Markout was from the four hour. So let's let's mark it out. Let's send it to the telegram group. Great. Okay. Go short into this area. Okay, we go short into that area and I'm trying to get this properly. Great. So we go short into this area. Let's let's get the screenshot and send it to um, the telegram channel. Okay, so do we have any question at all? Any question at all? Oh, wow, no problem at all, Dexter, no problem at all. Do we have any question at all on the whole markers, the analysis, the trade we took? Any any questions on the trades we took? Any questions on the trades we took? I'll go through the questions. I just want to show this out on a on the proper chart before sending i have to put out the mark out on the proper charts before sending it to the group so new one let's put that screenshot and here we go great So any question though, let's ask questions, please. Okay, the last one. Let's do all to ask questions, okay? It creates more clarity. Last screenshot is this one. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to the questions now. You're not seeing volume. Let me log in my my my. Let me log in my own uh, cloud trade right here, so I can check for you. Um, okay, again. So yeah, I'll go through the questions. Let's just continue dropping them. Yeah, the replay will be available. 
I would show you where um, the volume is on, on, on cloud. We've got nothing to worry about. Just let me launch it. It's loading. So I want to check, I want to show him where the, 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 the volume is. I'm coming, I can confirm that. Okay, that's not good. Time to look for the volume. You know what I will do for you, um, Karachi? I will go, I will just take out time during my lunch to check for, possibly it was named another thing, okay? I'm thinking it was named another thing. That was why. So I will do all to check for you during my lunch and I will let you know. So let me go through the questions. Let me go through the questions. Okay, yeah, the review will be made available. How do I draw my fields? There's a way to draw fields. In an uptrend, you draw from swing high to swing low. In a downtrend, you draw from swing low to swing high. Okay, I think that's it. Let me let me confirm that. Okay, I, sorry, don't give you wrong information actually. Um, okay, in a, in a downtrend, you draw from swing high to swing low. In an uptrend, you draw from swing low to swing high. That's it. Yeah, that's how it is. So I'm going through the questions now. And yes, these are pictures every day. Yeah, that I use the zoom screen option. No, I use the zoom screen option. I don't know why it acted that way. So um before we go, let's run a few polls. Um Trying to send in the pool. You see, there's a pool there. Please let's respond to it. Thank you. Now, do we all understand what we this what, what we discussed? Actually, do we all understand? We're able to follow through. Do we understand the things we discussed about in this webinar? How to trade? You see how we major on the London. Session precise. Okay, since we all were able to understand, and also we'll be looking to apply this concept we learn on the charts. This will bring us to the end of our webinar.
Okay, so um, like I said, since we all understand everything we discussed about in the webinar, yeah, I'll just wish everybody um, safe trading and let's all stay safe. Thank you very much.